Okay, I hope everybody can see me. I think I might have a few more people joining and I'm going to record this so you can use this uh, later on and do it as many times as you want to. I think it'll really be a good refresher. So we started our beginner yoga series last week or on Monday. So this is our second class and what I'd like to do is just review a couple of the things that we talked about on Monday and then go into a little more depth. And so hopefully after this class and Friday that you'll be able to feel comfortable walking into a yoga studio or starting up with some yoga classes. And I will try and cue multiple levels of each pose or a flow that we do so that you can figure out where your body needs to be. Remember that we always want to work to the edge where we feel work, we might feel tension, we might feel our bodies really working, but never to pain. And if something causes you pain or extreme exhaustion, don't do it. Just listen to your body and um, keep in mind that your ego is pretty strong. My ego is very strong and I always want to do more. And I think if I push myself harder, I get more benefit, but that's really counterintuitive to what yoga is all about. I like to tell people that yoga is breathing with a side of movement. And so we always return to our breathing and our breath helps to connect the work that is going on physically with what's going on inside mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And um, the more you practice, the more you'll start feeling that connection of your mind and body. And also something to keep in mind is when you're holding a pose and you're feeling extreme tension and tightness and work and that stress, the mental work that you do to become comfortable in that pose is the same mental work that you do when you're dealing with day-to-day -day life. With family members, tension with family members, with maybe, I don't know, an employee who is difficult to work with or a store clerk who's difficult or an insurance agent or whatever it is that creates tension in your life the same work that you do to become soft and at ease in a yoga pose is the same work that's required to become at ease in those points of tension. So to begin with today, I want to talk about lung capacity and about what um, we do with our lungs. And um, I wanna shut my phone off so I don't get distracted. Um, most of us in a given day are using 30% of our lung capacity. And that's a problem because bringing oxygen into our body is what fuels our body. It's what helps our brain to function. It's what helps to bring nutrients into our blood supply, supply that feeds our entire body. So if we can imagine this being our lungs, we're using about this much of our breathing. So our inhale looks like this, and it looks like that with an exhale, inhaling and exhaling. And through yoga, we become a little bit more mindful of the breath and we try to get our breathing more expanded and slower. So we really want to take advantage of that nice long inhale and that nice long exhale. And as we become more proficient with it, we'll start being able to get a deeper inhale, really stretching out those lungs and then exhaling. And during our yoga practice, we breathe through the nose. There will be times when you feel like you can't get enough breath and you'll uh, transfer over to breathing or inhaling, exhaling through your mouth. But as you become more proficient, you'll be able to do the entire practice breathing through your nose. So eventually what we want to do is if this is our lung, we really want to just expand it completely as tight as it can get and then slowly releasing it. And we want to make sure that we release all of the oxygen. So to practice doing that a little bit, um, let's take our right hand and we're going to put it on our, our belly, like right over our navel. And we'll put our left hand right on our chest. And what I want to do is we're going to um, practice breathing into different areas of our lungs so that you can get a feel for what the breath feels like and where you're used to breathing. 
So just relax yourself and begin to breathe through your nose just naturally how you usually feel your breath. You might feel your shoulders raising. And also I'd like you to close your eyes while we're doing this so you can really pay attention to what's going on inside, not being distracted by what's going on outside. And you should be feeling your chest rising and falling and your belly is probably fairly stable. So right now, let's focus on this area, pulling the breath into the top part of our chest. Inhaling deeply, feeling those ribs expand and exhaling. Now let's feel in the middle of our chest and see if we can target that area with the breath. So we'll have to inhale a little bit more deeply. You should feel your chest expanding, pushing out, and physically contracting, squeezing in to empty the lungs. So remember, we're just keeping the, the breath to this part of our lungs. Eyes are closed. One more breath here. Okay, and you can take that left hand back up to the top part of your chest. Now we're going to practice on bringing that breath into the entire capacity of the lung and you should feel your belly expanding and contracting as you do that. So this right hand, you're going to feel some movement coming out and coming in. So inhale deeply, pushing that belly out and exhaling, Squeezing that belly and pushing your navel right towards your spine, exhaling. Inhaling completely to fill the entire capacity of the lung and exhaling. Okay, with your eyes closed, Feel the expansion with your right and your left hand filling the entire lung. Inhaling deeply, pressing that belly out and exhaling as you contract and squeeze the entire abdominal cavity to exhale completely. And notice the feeling that's going on in your brain as you're getting more oxygen. You might feel a lightness and it might be a flood of oxygen that you're not accustomed to. Okay, now what we want to do is really work on a sigh with our exhale and trying to get, this is the most stress relieving thing that you'll ever do and you'll probably notice yourself doing this without even recognizing what you're doing during a stressful situation during your day that you might just <sighs> sigh. And that sigh is coming from the back of your throat, the top of the roof of your mouth and it's a sound that you make with the sigh and a lot of people have compared it to like the Darth Vader sound. So what I want you to do is inhale, feeling the entire capacity of your lungs and exhaling with a sigh. Inhaling, exhaling. And let's continue in this pattern and imagine on the exhale that every ounce of tension, stress, anxiety is leaving your body with that exhale. Okay, let's do one more deep inhale and a long exhale with an audible sigh. Okay, so 
my challenge today is find some time during your day where you're feeling a little bit of stress or anxiety or pressure and return to that audible sigh to relieve that stress. It's kind of like a stress valve relief. Okay, let's work on our posture a little bit. We want to practice with the neutral spine so you can remember that we're keeping this posture during our yoga practice. And what the neutral spine looks like is we're lengthening that spine, imagining space coming between each of your vertebrae and you want to extend it tall. So see if you can increase your height by even an inch. Okay, and notice what that does to your shoulders. It should open up your chest. It should tuck your tummy in so your navel is being pulled into your spine. And then let's just rest our hands on our wrists right here and feel the work that it takes our core to maintain a neutral spine. So your gaze is straight forward. You're not stiff, but you're attentive to your posture, pulling that navel in. And then let's add the pelvic floor, lifting the pelvic floor up. And this really should feel like a lot of work, pulling that pelvic floor up, tucking the navel in, lengthening the spine, opening up the chest, the face is neutral looking forward. Now let's try to breathe deep into our lungs holding this posture. And there are times during your day where you, you can check back into your posture. So maybe when you're sitting, eating a meal, I always check back into my posture when I'm folding laundry, I find myself leaning over doing this, but I really want to keep that spine tall, the shoulders open. with the breath. Okay, now we're going to go into some work on our shoulders and our neck, opening them up. What we do all day long on a computer, on our phone, we're looking down. And what that's doing is creating something that doctors are calling tech neck. Um, my daughter is in to a chiropractor. She's had 10 sessions with a chiropractor trying to undo what's been happening to her since COVID and she's doing all that work on her laptop and on her phone that she's starting to come forward and her neck is literally inches out of alignment. And what that looks like is you'll start getting a little bit of a bump coming out here because your neck is coming forward in this state, you don't get that opening behind it. So we're going to work on opening up into the neck. And this is something Joe, that you can teach your girls as well. So what we want to do, we're extending the spine, our shoulders are back, and we can feel some tension between our shoulder blades, opening that space up. And let's just start doing some rotations with the neck. So we want to bring that chin all the way up to 12 o'clock, and then try and put the bottom lip on top of the top lip to really stretch that out and lengthen it really press that chin up and back. And then we'll go on a clock face with our chin as the hour hand and we go to one o'clock into two o'clock and to three o'clock. And three o'clock we should have our chin right over that right shoulder coming down to four o'clock. And to five o'clock we're reaching towards our clavicle with our chin, and you should be able to feel some lengthening between the left ear and the left shoulder as you push that chin into your collarbone. Okay, continuing, tucking your chin into the center of your chest, really opening up the back of the neck. And then coming to the left collarbone, really pressing that chin, thing if you can reach it. And you want to keep your shoulders down. Don't let your shoulders come up to meet. You really want to press your shoulders down and let your chin and neck do the work. So you're feeling space between your right ear and your right shoulder. Okay, keep pressing towards eight o'clock. And nine o'clock, you're right over that shoulder. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and then reverse it. So 12 o'clock to 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 
nine o'clock. And again, press back. See if you can get that chin beyond the back of your left shoulder. Eight o'clock, seven o'clock to the collarbone, six o'clock, five o'clock, four o'clock, back to three o'clock, two o'clock, one o'clock. Now we're just going to gaze left and right. So pulling your shoulders down, your ears up, gazing over the left shoulder, left to right, to left, to right, left, and then finally back to right. And then we want to imagine that there's a board coming out from the bottom of our chin and out the back of our head and we're going to slide our chin forward and then tuck it back and slide it back forward and back forward you might feel your neck starting to adjust itself like a chiropractic adjustment forward last one back okay let's come to our knees and we'll continue to work on this tech neck situation so with on our knees, trying to get our hips directly over our knees, our chest is open, and we're squeezing our shoulder blades together. Our face is neutral at this point, and we're going to take our palms, our flat palms, and reach them around and place them in our back pockets. So we're inhaling and then squeezing those shoulder blades together, trying to get our elbows pressed close together, and placing our palms into our back pockets, sliding down and pressing forward. So you're squeezing your glute, opening the hips forward, pressing into the back pockets, squeezing the shoulder blades together, and then looking up. And this movement is the direct opposite of what we do when we're on our phones and on our laptops looking down. Okay, let's slide those hands out of the pockets. You can shake the arms out, rotate the neck, and we'll do it one more time. Okay, inhaling. Remember our spine is extended and tall. Inhaling, squeezing shoulder blades together, bringing our elbows as close together as we can get them, sliding the palms into the back pocket and pushing forward, squeezing the glutes, squeezing the shoulder blades together, trying to get our elbows closer together and raising the chin, tucking that navel into the spine. Okay, release it. And then we'll come to an extended baby pose. So our palms will come to the front of the mat the laces side of our feet. So the tops of our feet come down and we're going to create a space between our heels to lower our behind, to lower our hips into that space. So we're going to stretch out these arms, really reach them forward. You can crawl them forward, press them forward. Try to create space between your hips and your fingertips. So pressing your hips back and down, fingertips forward, and then drop your head to the mat. And anytime your forehead comes to the mat, it's a centering and a grounding move and a relaxing move. So if you do a pose like this before bedtime, it helps to relax your nervous system, calm anxiety, calm stress. And then again, you can return to that breathing, inhaling through your nose, exhaling through your nose. And during these poses, as much as you can, our goal is to keep our eyes closed during most of the practice. Let's take some deep breaths here. Okay. Under the pose and we'll come to table pose. And table pose looks just like a table. Wrist directly under the elbow, directly under the shoulder. And then our knees are right under the hip, okay? and we're keeping our face facing the mat, okay? So we'll work on cat, K, 
cow in this position, and the movement in cat-cow comes between the shoulder blades. So we try and keep our low spine stable and as neutral as possible. So exhaling as we squeeze our shoulders and middle back up and close in towards our chest, so our chin close to our chest, and then inhale as we reverse the movement and come up to our cow, sinking the space between our shoulders, stabilizing the low spine, really opening up this way. And again, we're closing into cat, so we're exhaling as we close our body, tighten it, make it smaller. And inhale as we open up and expand, making our body larger. And that's just a general rule for all of these moves is that when you close in, make yourself smaller, it's an exhale. And an inhale is when you're expanding and opening yourself up. So really starting to get some flexibility into your spine. Our elbows are facing the back wall. There's a difference if your elbows are out or if your elbows are tucked into the back. And if they're tucked in facing the back wall, you'll start to feel some real strengthening going on in the arm. So inhale as we open, exhale as we close. Inhale as we open, exhale as we close. Okay, staying in this pose, we'll work on bird dog. And this is a pretty common pose and it's really good for balance and it's really good for strengthening. And what we work with is the opposite arm with the opposite leg. So right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. So what we'll do with an inhale, we're going to raise our left arm and our left leg and point it straight out, trying to create a parallel line to the floor between our fingertips and our toes. Now let's tuck that navel in. We really want to engage the core, keeping our right elbow facing the back wall, tucking that belly in, breathing. One more breath here, and then release it back to table pose. Okay, left, right arm, left leg. Inhale, stretch that right arm forward, the left leg back, trying to keep it in a straight line, parallel to the floor. Tucking that navel in. And then check to see if your face is soft. See if your brow is furrowed or if it's relaxed. See if your jaw is clenched or if it's relaxed. And your breath should be soft and gentle. Okay, release it. Okay, this time we'll push our left arm up and our left leg up. So, or sorry, left arm up, right leg up. And again, our right elbow is tucked to our side facing the back wall. And we're really pushing our hand up to the ceiling, pushing our toes up to the ceiling. And then take just a moment to close your eyes and notice how the work of this pose changes when you don't have input from your vision. Your body has to do a lot more work to maintain the balance. Okay, one more breath here and release it. Okay, right arm raises, left leg raises. Inhale, pushing that right arm and left leg up tucking your navel in, really squeezing that left glute, pushing your knee up higher, pushing your elbow up higher. Take a moment to close your eyes and feel how the work changes. One more breath here, pushing it up a little bit higher. Okay, let's release it. Okay, and we'll come back to that extended baby pose. So reaching out and we're releasing that tension that we just created in our low spine. Deep breaths here. Okay, 
Okay, we'll come forward, lying on our stomachs and work with a few poses here on our stomachs. Okay, one of the most basic poses, and you'll probably remember having done this when you were a kid watching TV, is crocodile pose. So right now, put your toes and your heels together, your legs are straight, and then bring your torso up and just rest your chin in your palms. And breathe into this pose. Think if you could squeeze your heel together and your toes are touching. And then allow your spine to soften and allow your chin to rest on your palms. Working on the breath. And now open up the heels. And you'll feel yourself relax into the pose a little bit more. This is a real calming move also that you can do before bedtime. Or when you're watching TV. Okay, we'll work with the basic cobra pose. And this takes a lot of core strength. And so there are different variations that you can do with this. And put your fingertips right under your shoulders. And again, that forehead goes to the mat. Let your heels fall apart. We're going to work on just lifting our face for a moment. So our palms, our body weight is not on our palms. It's just resting with our torso and our legs on the mat. Our hands are barely here. So raise the face on an inhale because we're opening up. And just pause here and tuck those elbows in. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. And then slowly start lifting your chest using only the strength in your core, not your hands to lift yourself up a little bit farther. And again, when you're up here, you're feeling this tension and this tightness, really working on trying to become comfortable in this point of stress and tension. Okay, slowly, slowly, slowly release it. On an exhale. And when you come back to the mat, you can rest one cheek to the mat. And again, just let your body rest completely weightless on your mat. Okay, forehead back to the mat. And we'll work on that one more time. Keeping those palms soft. Let's keep our heels together. Inhale, bring your face up. Just opening up that face, gazing forward. Exhale. And on the next inhale, start to lift your chest up off the mat, squeezing those heels together. Our palms are barely resting and we're using the strength only in our torso, in our back to lift ourselves. Now squeeze that navel in towards the spine. Really working on core strength helps our posture, helps prevent back problems, et cetera. Okay, slowly, slowly, slowly release. Nice, soft, gentle exhales. Okay, this time when we come up, we're going to engage the arms a little bit. Make sure our elbows are tucked in, our fingertips are directly under the shoulders, our heels are together, inhaling as we lift our face. And lifting our chest, remember our hands aren't being used yet. And now we'll transfer weight to our palms and lift ourselves up farther. And you'll notice that your glutes are squeezing in, engaging to lift yourself up, up farther. Now separate your ears from your shoulders, really pulling that head out and the shoulders down and release. Exhaling slowly. Softly. Okay, now rest your opposite cheek to the mat. And if you need to, you can rest your arms and see how comfortable you can get with just three breaths here. Okay. 
Okay, our fingertips come back under the shoulder, forehead to the mat, heels together. No weight on our palms at this point, lifting our face on an inhale and exhale. Lifting our chest on an inhale and an exhale. Engaging the palms and the arms on an inhale, lifting ourselves up farther, really trying to squeeze those heels together, tucking the navel in, shoulders separating from the ear, chin is up. And release with an exhale, slowly and with control. Okay, rest your arms, come to your cheek. I taught a class last night to some women who are really good at getting to the gym and lifting weights and really working on their fitness and their strength. And they were exhausted with the yoga class and were so surprised that with just the weight of their body, they could get more fatigued and more muscle work than they could with weights. So I, I'm totally a believer of that. Okay, so let's place our palms to the sides of our hips. Our forehead is down, our heels are together, and this time we're just going to lift our legs. And as they lift, they'll separate. So on the inhale, lifting our legs and letting them separate, really trying to push the knees up towards the ceiling, press the soles of the feet up to the ceiling, squeezing your glutes, squeezing your navel in, and then release with an exhale, slowly come back. Okay, so let's try that and feel the difference with our hands up under our shoulders. Okay, our heels are together. Inhale, lift our legs and really push our soles up towards the ceiling, trying to get as much height as we can with our knees. Okay, release it. Okay, really take some good deep breaths here. And then we'll add our arms and our legs together. So our arms are going to come out over our head. Our legs are stretched out. Our heels and toes are together. And when they raise, they'll separate. And we'll lift our arms, face, chest, and legs at the same time. Okay, inhale, lift. And try and get that face forward, the chest up off of the mat. The legs as high as you can get them. And then slowly, slowly, slowly release it. Resting a cheek to the mat. And we'll do one more. Okay, forehead back to the mat, heel toe together, arms straight out over the head. One more time. Inhale, lift up. Remember, we're inhaling as we're expanding and opening up, exhaling as we contract and close. Okay, release it. And then it might feel good for you to come back into your extended baby pose reaching out, stretching out those glutes, your spine, your shoulders, your arms. And then we'll return to a seated position. And I'd like to show you a couple of things with our seating positions. As you sit here, you should be able to feel a bone on each side of your hips. And sometimes you'll have to take some of that flesh out from side to side until you can really square that up and just kind of wiggle around a little bit until you feel equal balance between both of those bones, okay? And extending our spine, opening up 
our chest, taking some deep breaths. We're going to fold forward. And as we fold forward, our spine stays stable. It doesn't curve or bend, it lies flat until our body is supported with our hands or with our hands to our legs or to the floor, but we never want to leave our spine unsupported hanging. So it looks something like this from the side view, okay? Flexing from the hip. And a good way that you can tell if you're flexing from the hip is press your thumbs into this hip joint and you should be pinching your thumbs as you come forward, okay? So keeping that spine flat, straight, as you come forward and you can reach behind your back, grabbing your left wrist with your right hand. And once you're down, as far as your body allows you to go, then you can slowly melt over your body into a more full expression of the pose. And again, it may be that you can come down this far and that's perfectly fine. Keep your spine straight. And then with each exhale, see if you can release a little bit. You'll notice that you start collecting stress in your hip joints and in your shoulders as you stay in this position. And what you want to do when you notice that tightening start coming is just mentally make a note of it. And with the breath, breathe softness and relaxation into that. And you should see yourself falling a little bit more into the pose with each exhalation. So I think we'll stay in this pose for one minute, which might feel like a lot. And again, here is that work that we do where we're finding ourselves in a place of tension and stress, and we're doing mental work to allow our body to relax in this state of tension. Most people think that when you're full of anxiety and agitation that you need to work on calming your brain so you can calm your body, but the reverse is true. You calm your body and your brain will, will follow suit. So find a comfortable, relaxing position for your body and then your brain follows that to find relaxation. Just breathing, seeing how deep we can get that breath into our lungs. Seeing if we're tightening up in those hips and allowing it to release and soften. Is your brow furrowed? your jaw clenched. Okay, coming out of this pose, inhale as we open up and come back to a seated position. Okay, let's take our legs straight out. And I want to show you how much work it takes for us just to stay in a mindful seated position. So with our legs straight out, let's flex our heels. Pull our kneecaps into the thighs, extending our spine tall, balancing the weight between both of our sitting bones. Our chin is level, our face is forward, and let's just place our hands to the side with our chest opened. Slight tension between your shoulder blades, and we'll hold this for a minute. And you can see how dynamic just a stagnant pose like this can be and how much strengthening you can do. And pay attention when your body wants to start slacking and closing in. And with an inhale, go back and check your heels that they're flexed. Knees are pulled into your thighs. Navel tucked tight, close to your spine. Pelvic floor is lifted, spine is tall and extended, shoulder blades are squoze together, chest is open, face is forward. And remember that breath, trying to get it as deep as possible into the lungs. 
and you might feel some shaking in your body just maintaining a sitting posture. This is a very basic pose called staff position. Remember to keep that spine extended, the heels flexed, knees pulled into the thighs, shoulder blades tight together, chest is open. Okay, and let's release. Okay, you might want to stretch your legs out a little bit. Taking a deep breath. Okay, we'll work on a spinal twist. And something that you always want to remember, you never ask your spine to do two movements at once. You always stabilize the spine before you do anything else. So we're going to extend the spine, keeping it tall and straight before we move it to the side. So let's take that right foot cross over the left knee and come and sit nice and tall. Check to see that your shoulders aren't hunched over. So we really wanna open that chest, extend the spine and stabilize the spine. Okay, our left elbow goes to the outside of our right knee. Okay, remember our spine is tall and straight and now we can move to the side once we've stabilized that spine. Okay, and open up to the long side of the mat. And if it interests you, you can gaze over that right shoulder Again, doing that neck movement that we did at the beginning of class. And keeping this neck flexible really, really helps me with my driving. I say this all the time, but I don't have to move my entire body to check for oncoming traffic. I can just glance back, twist my neck, and see if a car is coming. Okay, let's release it. And then extend that leg out. And this time we'll cross our left foot over. And I want to show you a, a low spine safety move that you can do if you start noticing issues with your low spine. And that's to always keep your chin and your chest uh, together. So what we can do is we can put our hands in prayer position. Our fingertips come to our chin. Our thumb comes to the center of our chest. And as we do the twist, we keep our chin and our chest in sync and aligned. And this really makes the twist come to the mid to upper spine and keeps that low spine protected. So extend the spine tall, stabilize it, and let's gaze over to our left side. And you can feel the difference in that twist, keeping the chin and the chest aligned. You'll feel more in the middle back to upper back really pushing that left shoulder back. Okay, and then let's release it. Okay, both of your legs come straight. I want to do a forward fold. We'll hold it for one minute. And again, moving that flesh out from side to side, flexing our heels, pulling our kneecaps into our thighs, extending the spine, Inhaling as we reach up. Now we're going to flex from the hip. Our back does not round until it's supported with our hands. Okay, keeping that spine flat, coming forward. And when you reach your edge, you can grab to the mat with your hands to support your spine. And then you can bend into the pose, but only after your spine is supported. And it'll take a long time and a lot of work to be able to get your chest to lie flat. And maybe some of you might not be able to do it. A lot of this has to do with how your body is put together, how mobile and flexible your joints are, how lengthened your ligaments and tendons are. But there's always improvement that you can do when you're working with flexibility. Let's just hold this for a minute. Breathing softly. And again, this is a point of tension. You'll be feeling tension. Notice where you're collecting it, maybe the back of your knees, back of your thighs, your shoulders. Make note of it and see if you can breathe softness into that tension when you notice it gathering. 
And with each exhale, find yourself falling a little bit farther into the pose. Making sure that our brow is relaxed, our jaw is not clenched, the skin on our face is soft. And you can add a different dimension to this by just tucking your chin in closer to your chest. And you'll feel more of a stretch in the back of your knees when you do that. And that's an indication of fascia in your body. And fascia is connective tissue that connects all of your organs, all of your muscles, all of your ligaments in every part of your body. Okay, release it. Coming out of this. Okay, and I'd like to do a couple of standing positions, poses. So come up to your standing and you can grab a drink of water if you're feeling like you need that. And I'll teach you the basics of our warrior one, two, and three. So we'll start with warrior one and warrior one, both of our toes are facing forward, facing the front of the mat. We step forward with our left and step back with our right, always being mindful to keep that knee behind the toes, okay? So find that space that feels comfortable for you. It might be a more deep expression of the pose and you might be able to separate your feet a lot farther. So the goal, if you have a strong low spine, a healthy low spine, is to keep your hips forward. But if you have low spine issues, you're welcome to open those hips out a little bit to the side to ease the tension in your low spine. So once you find your balance here, your full foot on the ground in front of you and behind you, add some strong arms, palms facing each other, reaching up really holding strength. So balancing the weight between both feet. That knee doesn't come over the front toes, but you've got it low, as low as you can. Pulling the navel in, pelvic floor up, squeezing those glutes, pressing that back heel down, stretching out that calf, really finding strength here. One more breath, and then we'll release it. Coming forward. Okay, you might wanna shake out those legs. And this time our right leg comes forward and our left leg comes back, finding that space that we're comfortable with. And it might take a little bit of adjusting here. And when you find that balance between your front and back leg, add your strong arms, palms facing each other, really pulling out and separating your shoulders, reaching up, pressing your hips lower to the mat and breathing, keeping that navel tucked tight to your spine, pelvic floor lifted, holding strength in this pose. Breathing. Okay, let's take one more breath here. And then we can release out of this pose. Okay, shake it out. And we'll move to warrior two. And warrior two, our back foot is at a 45 degree angle and our front foot comes straight. So let's take our, let's do, let's take our left leg forward and our right foot steps back and that right foot is at a 45 degree angle. And the weight is on the outside, this long side of the back of our foot, trying to keep as much of our foot flat to the ground as we possibly can. You might wanna slide that back, finding that space that feels good to you. And with this one, we are opening our hip out to the longer side of the mat. So finding that balance, we can bring that knee a little bit farther over our foot. And then we add our arms, 
parallel to the floor and we gaze over our fingertips in the front. So we're gazing over that left middle finger, really squeezing our glutes together, tucking that navel in, breathing softness. Okay, we'll take a reverse warrior two. So we take this back arm and slide it down our back leg, lifting our left arm to the ceiling. And again, gazing up over that left arm, really stretching out that left side, separating each rib on the left of our rib cage. Okay, coming back to warrior two. And then let's reverse it again and come forward, straighten that front leg, bringing the palm to the side, opening up and then gazing up to our right hand. And this is a great time. So if you're staying in this pose, this is a great time to incorporate a block for an aid if you're not able to come all the way down. So you can use that block for balance. Or you can, if you're able to come all the way to the floor and then open up that way. Okay, lifting up out of that, coming back to our warrior two. And now we're going to rotate it to the back side of the mat. This time our right foot faces the back wall and our left foot is at a 45 degree angle, opening up the hips, squeezing the glutes. Our arms come straight out. Let me see if I can get those straight. Leaning over that front knee and gazing over our right fingertips. Holding strength here, really building these quad muscles, tucking that navel in to keep our core engaged. And then let's reverse the warrior by sliding that hand down our back leg, bringing this right arm forward and we're gazing up over our right fingertips. Holding strength, tucking that navel in. Okay, releasing it. Lean back to where you're two. And then straightening this right leg, we'll lean forward and windmill ourselves into another reverse option. Gazing up over these left fingers. And again, you can place a block here to the inside of your foot to support you. And you might have your knees slightly bent to help you transition into the pose. One more breath and we'll release it. Okay, coming back up. Back to work. And then step out of it. Okay, shaking your arms and your legs out. And we'll do warrior three, and then we'll come to the mat and um, do our last meditation. Okay, so warrior three starts out similar to warrior one, and we'll step forward. Let's let, yeah, I'll step forward to the left. So arms down to the side, stepping forward with the left, keeping our arms parallel to our body, leaning forward, placing the weight on that front foot, lifting the back leg. And this is a great time to keep a chair here or a wall close. This is really an intense balance pose. And then we can come into warrior three. And if you're stable, you can mess with your arms in this pose. So you can bring your arms out or you can bring them forward. 
working on that balance. Okay, let's release it. Apparently I need to work on that balance. Shake it out and then we'll step forward with our left foot. So hands to the side, stepping forward with our left foot, balancing the weight or stepping forward with our right foot, balancing the weight onto our right foot, raising our left leg, keeping our leg and torso parallel to the floor, holding the balance here. You can add your arms out to the side or forward. And release it. Okay, so that's the basic of basics of warrior one, two, and three. And then we've had some options adding on to them with some reverse warriors. Okay, we have just about five minutes left, and I'm going to need to leave a little bit. I usually do a meditation for about 10 minutes, but I hope to be out of here by five minutes after 11. So let's work our way back to the mat, sitting down, and we'll come into a Shavasana pose. And Shavasana is a restorative pose. It's a great one to do at bedtime as well, or during the day, or anytime you feel like you need to relax yourself. And I like to have a bolster, and I just got this on Amazon, but it's really helpful in so many different ways with yoga. So I like to keep my knees up. It helps my back. But Shavasana will look like this for most of you. Lying on our back, our legs are straight, there's space between our knees, and we're allowing our feet to fall out to the side opening up the hips and then our arms come out with some space in between the armpit and our palms are up. And let's just lie here and see what we're feeling inside our body. So eyes are closed, paying attention to what the energy in your body is doing. You might feel tingling all over your body. You might feel it coursing and surging through your body. You might feel it bringing life and rejuvenation and energy into your body. And with the breath, to see if you can find yourself sinking more deeply into the mat to the point that the earth is supporting your entire body and you've allowed every muscle, joint, tendon, ligament to completely relax. Eyes are closed, your face is soft, really just focusing on that breath. Inhaling through the nose, Exhaling long and steady through the nose. Inhaling that cool, cold breath. Exhaling a warm, moist breath. And for the next few breaths, just allow yourself to continue to sink into the mat, becoming more and more at ease. Finding your most comfortable position so that you can lie completely motionlessness for the next three or four minutes. Consider for a moment if you're nice to yourself. Consider how compassionate you are with yourself. Are you kind to yourself? Are you forgiving to yourself? Do you allow yourself to be loved 
and to feel love. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. And we'll begin this meditation by recognizing each of our own desires to be happy and content and to feel peace, belonging, and loved. Don't worry about what will make you happy or feel loved, but just pay attention to your desire And in your mind, say to yourself, I want to be happy. And through this meditation, I'll offer four phrases that will sync with our breath. And you can begin to offer these phrases of loving kindness to yourself. And as you say them to yourself, say them slowly and connect with the intention behind each of the words, even if you don't yet feel them entirely in this moment. So inhale deeply and on the exhale, repeat, may I be happy. Inhale deeply and on the exhale, repeat, may I be healthy. Inhale deeply, and on the exhale, repeat, may I be safe. And finally, inhale, and on the exhale, repeat, may I be at ease. With each exhale, slowly repeat, may I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be safe, and may I be at ease. And allow yourself to repeat these phrases for the next two minutes. May I be happy, may I be healthy, may I be safe, may I be at ease. And allow these phrases to permeate every part of your body. For the next minute, imagine in your life, imagine in your mind, your day, 
how you were going to show up more happy, more healthy, more safe, and more at ease. And imagine what this looks like for you and for the people that you associate with and for the stories that you tell yourself. How will you be happy? How will you be healthy? How will you provide safety? And how will you be at ease? With your next deep inhalation, start to bring small movements into your fingers and into your toes, in your wrists, in your ankles, stretching your arms, reaching over your head, stretching your legs, moving from side to side bringing life and movement and vitality back to your body. And when you're ready, return to a seated cross-leg position, with your hands at heart center. And today my wish for you is happiness and health and safety and ease. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste. Thank you today. I hope this was a good class for you and you learned a few new things for your practice. And we'll finish up this three class series on Friday and we'll start to put together our Monday class with today's class and hopefully that will prepare you to start any yoga class that you want to start with. So have a good day. Thank you.